G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Sunday afternoon here in Australia. Markets up ever so slightly again, still just holding above that $2.3 trillion, which is very, very nice. Bitcoin dominance sort of just still hovering just under that 41% and gas prices, I mean, they just continue to climb. They really are sort of crazy at the moment. Uh, Ethereum is again just out of reach of, you know, the everyday kind of user, unfortunately. Uh, it's the big players club. <sighs> Again, disappointing. I really like ETH. Uh, I wish I could do a whole lot more with it. But unless you can get on some kind of uh, L2, yeah, the main chain is just horrendous. But anyway, we're going to move on from that. We can see the volume's down a little bit. But again, it is a weekend, so that's uh, not to be un not unexpected. All right, bit of a mixed bag. Some things up, some things down. Again, the market pretty much just sideways. But that's not too bad for a weekend. We can live with that. What's been the best mover in the last 24 hours though? What's done really well? Quant, I mean, look at that, nice, 20% move. IOTA, nice move. Matic, I did say just yesterday, I felt like Matic was getting ready to make a move and I actually said on Twitter uh, days and days ago, so I think it was very early September that I said, I think Matic is likely to make a move. But Filecoin made a nice move. We can see a number of nice double-digit moves. Uh, and on a weekend, it's pretty nice. How much of that they're going to hold come sort of Monday morning is what we'll have to wait and see. But all right, so, you know, half a percent move upwards in the market. What about downturns and what coins have not fared as well? Well, Axie Cash, Bitcoin Cash, are we there? You can see a lot of these coins pump the other day, and that's all you need to remember. If something pumps one day, then there's a good chance it's probably going to, you know, sort of have a bit of a correction at some stage. Well, you know, some coins will get lucky and they might pump for a couple of days, couple of weeks, I'll get on a hot streak, but then they're going to pull back. Solana, uh, back a little bit, but, you know, whether it's actually done or not, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It has been on such a rise, though, it's hard to know sort of, you know, exactly where it is. But generally, the gains far outweigh the losses. Uh, and, you know, that's obvious by the fact that the market is up uh, ever so slightly. But you can still see uh, the change. I mean, again, look at those. Lots of double-digit gains. Really, really nice. Uh, and one double-digit loss. And then we're basically into a couple of mid-single-digit losses and then just really low single-digit losses. So... Most people would have to be pretty happy. Most people would be pretty happy with that. Again, struggling with my English. I do apologise. Anyone would think it's not my first language. All right, moving over to the Bitcoin chart. So again, it just keeps ticking up in this uh, upwards trend, tr trending channel that it has been in for a very long time. And now it just looks like Bitcoin's just going to continue to hold fifty thousand, uh, and you know, just keep slowly ticking up. Bitcoin is not in a hurry to do anything at the moment. But while Bitcoin does these kind of little, you know, just ticking up ever so slightly, ever so slightly, uh, the altcoins are doing really well. But this could be forming an upwards trending kind of pennant uh, that is a little bit worried that means it you know, could, again, break back down to sort of 42,000 at some stage. Uh, I'm not sure that it's going to do that, but it's just something we need to keep in the back of our minds. It's definitely something that could happen. But again, if we drop some from 50,000 back down to 42,000, and again, test that, and it becomes support, then that's still quite bullish. It's if we come down to 42,000, and again, you know, start coming, you know, all the way back down to 36,000, and finding support here, then this is just a whole stack of uh, lower highs that are being set in, that are, that are setting in, excuse me, and we are starting to form lower lows as well. And that's what we have to worry about. But again, I don't think a correction down to sort of 42,000 uh, would be so bad. I'm not expecting it. I'm just saying I don't think it'd be that bad. But again, it would be still low, uh, ultimate high, lower high, lower high, maybe a lower high, and then again, could mean that we're uh, in a bearish trend. Again, that's not what I'm thinking, that's not what I'm expecting, but it is sort of always something that I just keep in the back of my mind, just in case. Like I said, I've always got uh, a plan for what I think is going to happen, and then a plan for, well, what if that doesn't happen? All right, a couple of stories I wanna focus on. This one I found very interesting, and it is just showing a sign of the times. 
Bitcoin is superior to gold, according to 77% of Russian investors, says the survey. Now, you've got to take this with a little bit of grain of salt. Was this survey sent out to you know people who are all into crypto? I don't know, but 77%, that's over three quarters of investors, think that Bitcoin is far superior to gold. It is a changing of the guard. It is a changing of the times. This is the way things are going. Now, I'm not trying to say that gold is absolutely useless. It has some real world value. And look, even as uh, a store of value, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe, particularly, you know, that doomsday prepping kind of stuff, you know, if the you know world's going to you know lose a big solar flare or something and the satellites and everything go out, then it'll be back to gold for a really long time. But outside of that happening... I think Bitcoin and these digital assets are definitely the way of the future. And again, you're still so early. Also says here, while less than 9% actually believe in gold. So there you go. The times are changing, as that song says, and it is happening right in front of your eyes. All right. I said I haven't got into NFTs, and technically I still haven't, but this one caught my attention. Bored Ape Yacht Club artist is building a community of NFT vampires. This is the part that got uh, got me. I'm a bit of a vampire and werewolf fan. I really like all the vampire and werewolf movies. You know, I'm not going to go and name all the ones I've into, but it, I'm into. But if you've watched them, I was probably into them. I really, really like that kind of stuff. Other than some real cheap, corny ones, then maybe not. But all the really good ones, absolutely. And again, it's the guy, or not the guy, but the artist from Board Ape Yacht Club. So I decided to get onto this. And what you can do is if you scroll down, click on here, it'll actually take you over to the site. So this is it at the moment. Now these are the vampires and things like that. Again, these are the NFTs. But what I really liked is at the moment, it's 0.00 of an ETH to get in. Now this isn't running at the moment. You can't get any uh, just yet. It still hasn't started and we're waiting to find out you know when it is and how long this uh, 0.08 ETH will last uh, is another question as well but also you can get onto their Twitter get onto their discord and find out what's going on so I've signed up for this I'm pretty keen to you know experience what the NFTs are now for me as I said I don't know enough about NFTs to go too crazy if the price you know really skyrockets up and they're still you know it's starting to be like you know more than an ETH even more than half an ETH really to get in, then unfortunately that'll probably just price me out. I just won't be able to sort of keep up with that. And I would be too worried that I'd be putting my money into something that unfortunately will never retain its value. But for 0.08 of an ETH, I'm happy to probably, you know, well not probably, I'm happy to get in. I've got to try the NFT somewhere, but I'm not going to, you know, pour thousands and thousands of dollars into an NFT uh, to find out that I made the wrong choice. And I'm not saying I made the wrong choice here. I want to get into the space and, you know, the vampire thing is what got me. If there's any werewolf uh, NFT sort of plays out there, let me know. I'd love to get into one of those as well, provided the price isn't uh, completely crazy. But there we go. I'm jumping into the NFT space. Hopefully I can get in. So uh, anyone from uh, Sneaky Vampire Syndicate, if you can help me out in ensuring that I get a spot in there in my first ever NFT, that would be great. And look, I'll keep you updated with how this is going. But again, there's Twitter and Discord and everything there. And I'm part of the Discord and I'm following them on Twitter. So if you haven't got into the NFT space and this is something you want to, have a look at this. And again, that's never financial advice. I don't ever offer you financial advice. All right. Wall Street bets. Looks like they want to come over and bring stocks to the blockchain, but synthetic versions. And there's been a lot of talk about you know the sec and all sorts of people coming after you if you do that but here it says newly launched wall street bets DeFi app aims to take over traditional financial markets so it says here the project the project which is called wsbdap.com pro- excuse me provides traders with the ability to swap synthetic stocks backed by blockchain tech so synthetics is already the big leader and again a lot of people have been you know kind of scared off synthetics and even i was a little bit but i i'm no longer too worried about that at the moment i think they're just too decentralized uh to have kind of too many worries uh 
and I just really like the team and what they're doing. We'll have to wait and see, particularly with the talk that you know now the SEC is going to try and go after Uniswap. And if they can't get Uniswap, which is the biggest one of them all, then I think they're probably going to struggle to get some of the other ones, uh, particularly ones like Synthetics, which I think is fairly fairly well decentralised. Uh, you know, none of these projects are ever what you can call fully decentralised. You can say the same about Bitcoin. You know, there's definitely you know, people out there who own a whole lot more Bitcoin than other people, but that doesn't mean it's not decentralized. Uh, and the same with synthetic. So be interesting to see how they go, though. It means they want to take on, you know, the regulators and all the rest of it. And again, synthetics really has that first place mover. And they just got a good platform that's really uh, easy to use. Uh, and the space just keeps growing all the time. I think I'm going to do a video on synthetics in the not too distant future. I've lost my bearish sort of attitude towards them and I am uh, quite bullish on them again and particularly at the price which I think is about $12, $13 at the moment. But yep, Wall Street bets looks like they want to come out and bring you know the stocks to crypto and again it'll be interesting to see what happens around that whole regulatory space. Uh, and you need to remember the SEC isn't going to be able to come after every single DeFi uh, you know, app, DAP platform, whatever you want to call it, in one go. Hence why they pick one target at a time and they're like, well, if we can bring down Uniswap, then we're a good chance of bringing down the rest because Uniswap is the biggest and, you know, supposedly decentralized as well. But if they can't get onto, if they can't, you know, really have a good, decent crack at Uniswap, then they'll probably have to seriously consider their targets after that because they won't have been able to take down the biggest and, you know, allegedly most decentralized. All right, what I want to do is bring some charts to you, analysis. My video yesterday uh, was well received and well liked, uh, and thank you very much for everyone who hit the like button and watched and anyone who subscribed as well. I do appreciate that. So I'll try and bring you some more. So now I don't focus on too many coins outside of the top 100 hardly ever. I'm not saying never, but hardly ever. Most of the things I'm invested in are in the top 100 and particularly in the top 150. Uh, sorry, in the top 50. So let's have a look at Chainlink. Now, this is Chainlink versus the dollar since February, uh, January 2019, because this came out just after, uh, basically in the bear market and still managed to continue to go up. Now, again, we've I've drawn this line through the middle, and this is where it's got the most touch points, the most uh, confluence, confirmation, whatever you want to call it. And we can see that when you buy under this line, you're generally buying at a discount. And when you're buying above the line, you're generally buying into something that's uh, about to go up. Rarely, other than really over here, have you bought at this line and it's really gone down. It's happened here on one occasion, a tiny little bit there, definitely something here. And again, that was the big uh, sort of crash. Most of the times when you're buying on the line, it eventually makes its way up and has a good rally, even here you can see. But where are we now? Well below that line. Now again, this line can't last forever. It may now have to change. We'll have to wait and see. But based on the past, Chainlink is looking pretty good against the dollar at the moment. Particularly if you were lucky enough to, around the 20th of July, which is not that long ago, pick it up for around $13, you've doubled your money. Doubled your money in about a week. Well, not a week, a week and a half. You know, where else can you do that other than get lucky and go to the casino? And that's not me. I don't go to the casino uh, and bet or anything like that. Some people do. But again, 20th, 21st of July, thereabouts, you pick it up for, a, you know, if you're really lucky, $13.50, you've basically, yeah, doubled your money and some. And it's still below the line. So imagine it then goes on to do something like this. Chain look is looking pretty good against the dollar. Let's go and see how it's doing against ETH. Very, very interesting at the moment against ETH. Big, massive base for quite some time. Slowly started to tick its way up, had this big kind of blow off top, and where did it come back down and retest? Old resistance becomes support. Big blow off top has come down, old resistance and even old support is now acting as support so this is very very interesting now there's no guarantees this can hold and we can see that 
old resistance doesn't always become support because it didn't over here. Well, it did in this early part, but over here it didn't hold for very long and then eventually came down. So is it possible that Chainlink can, you know, come down to here against Ethereum? Absolutely. But at the moment, it's had multiple touch points here. I think it's looking pretty good and especially considering how undervalued it is against the dollar. Now, again, I must stress, none of this is financial advice. I'm never going to offer you financial advice. All I'm doing is looking at the charts and saying, look, even if I buy it here at whatever dollar value or ETH value you want to go by, sure, it could drop down back to here. And look, really bad case, it could drop back down to here. But compare that downside to that upside. That's where you've got to make a choice. And it is a little bit like taking a bet, but I don't consider putting money into Chainlink a bet. I consider that an investment and it's a long-term investment. Now, here looks pretty good to me because if it does unfortunately come down to here or even sort of down to there, then so be it. I know that at some stage it's going to pump back and let's say it does go down to here. I will keep buying Chainlink as long as it's going down in value uh, against Ethereum and Bitcoin and things like that because I know eventually it'll pump back up. But at the moment, this looks like a pretty sweet spot. And for me, as long as this sort of holds and there's no real big breakouts before I get some more money, I think Chainlink is where I'll be putting some money in the next uh, you know, week or so. Whenever it is, I get some more money. Looks quite nice there. Bitcoin, what are we seeing? Something fairly similar. It's bounced down around here. Old resistance has become support. Now it's up a little bit, uh, up a little bit against Bitcoin, so it absolutely could come down. But also, again, what's the downside from here? Probably to about down here. Could be to possibly down around about sort of here somewhere. The downside from here to there, again, a few Satoshis. A couple of thousand Satoshis, which don't get me wrong, it hurts. But what's the upside? A whole lot more. So again, Chainlink against the dollar looks undervalued. Chainlink against Ethereum looks like it is now trending along some sort of support resistance lines. And against Bitcoin, it's had a little bounce up from there. It all just looks pretty good to me. And again, that's never financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. Chainlink is a long-term hold for me. I would ha be happy to put money uh, into Chainlink here. And again, no matter what happens, short of something truly horrific happening and it going to zero, as they say, that would hurt. But outside of that, I know something like this is going to come. And what you need to remember is, particularly against Bitcoin, all of these good altcoins are going to outperform Bitcoin over time because they're just new. That's what it is. Their market caps aren't as big. So as more people come in, it's a whole lot easier for them to pump up than it is Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin's so big, it really does take huge volumes of money to make it pump. Don't get me wrong, Chainlink's anything but small, but it's nowhere near the size of Bitcoin. So this will one day be something like this. And then we move to this. And then we move to this. And then we move to who knows. So Chainlink for me looks very nice. Another one that I really like. Now this is more a small cap and we don't have a lot of history to go on. But this is the graph. I like the graph, like the team, like what they're about. Uh, bringing data on chain and compiling it together so people can get statistics and data and all of that. Brilliant. Here it is versus the dollar. Had its big pump up, came down, found a low. Had a big pump up and has been coming down for quite some time. And now it's basically sort of found its low round about here. You could even say it retested it, double bottom. And now it's starting to make its way back up. Look at that, hit that like it was resistance as well. Uh, it looks pretty good at the moment. Is it getting ready to make another big move up? Now, again, it doesn't mean it simply goes from here to boom this and it just happens overnight. This could be a little bit of this and then we come back down, a little bit of this, and come back down. We could travel sideways or just ever so slightly upwards for quite some time. But at the moment, it looks roughly like it's undervalued, particularly against the dollar. All right, well, let's compare it to something else. How's it going against Ethereum? Even more interesting. Look where it is sitting. 
It has bounced off here before. I didn't even have to draw lines in. They're doing it for me. Here's where it started. Big, massive pump. Came back down, found its low against Ethereum, and then had this huge pump, blow off top. And now it's just sold off until it's got to the point where people, long-term hodlers and things like that, are happy to buy. There's not a lot of selling going on, not a whole lot of buying going on e either. It's just, you know, hanging in there. Dip below, this looks like it is forming a big, massive base to me against Ethereum. So again, the graph is somewhere I'll be looking to put money in. Link and the graph, uh, probably the best two that I could sort of find today. Uh, I'll have a look over you know, the next few hours and see what else I can find. But again, follow me on Twitter because I'll put a lot of stuff on Twitter before I can get it onto YouTube. So against the dollar, the graph, looking pretty good, like it's undervalued, which is when you want to buy it, undervalued. We don't want to be buying it up here when it's way overvalued. Against Ethereum, just hovering on these old sort of support uh, lines. Again, could definitely dip down below, it's possible, but I would be happy to put my money where my mouth is, as they'd say, and get into the graph at here. And it's probably been quite good to buy uh, the graph in comparison to Ethereum because it's been traveling relatively sideways with it. So last but not least, let's compare it to Bitcoin. Something very similar is happening again. Had its big blow off, came down, sort of found a low. We can move this up just a little bit. Hang on. You can probably say that's around about there. That's where its low was. Ticked up, boom, again. Big massive blow off top, falling down, falling down, falling down, and look where it is now. Old support and resistance lines hanging right on there. Now again, could this go lower? Absolutely. Could it even go down to here? Yes, it absolutely could, and it could even go lower. Something truly catastrophic, fault in the code, you know, whatever, it's possible. But is it likely? That's what I ask myself. No, I don't think it's likely. I think the graph's a really good project. It's got really good tech. I like what it's doing. I think this is a bit of a long-term play. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. And again, this looks like it is just accumulation, accumulation, accumulation. And that something like this and then this could be coming. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. That is my two picks at the moment, Link and the Graph. They are looking very juicy. Both of them have very juicy charts. And I only wish I had a little bit more money on me right now. But the money I sort of do have sitting on the side is for if there's any really big sort of hefty corrections, not just things that are looking nice. I, I, I always want to have a bit of cash on the side. And as I said, I don't have a lot of cash on the side. I deployed most of my cash a while ago and it slowly started to pay off. But these two charts are looking really, really nice. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good and I'll see you next time.